Ladies and gentlemen, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Remember that, all right? And God is very merciful. That's why <clears throat> he's able to obtain mercy all the time. I want to talk about um, the difference between modern day boxing and the standard of modern day boxing compared to boxing from bygone eras. And what we're looking at here is a number of modern boxers such as uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather, Oscar De La Hoya, and Sugar Ray Leonard compared to some throwback fighters, some fighters from way back when, such as uh, Julio Cesar Chavez and Sugar Ray Robinson. You're going to see how different things were due to modern day compared to back in the day. It was a different time. Now, in modern day, <clears throat> this is how incredible it is. I'm, we're going with the gold standards of each era. Oscar De La Hoya was the man of the 2000s and the 1990s and Ray Leonard was the man of the 80s Floyd Mayweather was the man of 2000s you know to the 2010s right uh, it's in the 2000 and teens so we're gonna look at these guys because the standard that these guys had was incredible so let's start off with Floyd Mayweather once these guys became world champion we're gonna look at how many stay busy fights they had or how many tune-up fights they actually had when it you know and why that's important is because when you look at the standard that these guys had in modern times and the standard in modern times, it is completely different to the standard of bygone eras because boxing was different. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So when we look at it, Floyd Mayweather first became world champion and won the WBC World Super Featherweight title from Gennaro Hernandez. From this time forward, if it, there's any title fights going on, you know those are not stay busy fights. They're just not. Or tune-up fights. However... If it's a non-title fight, what you got to do, and we're going to scroll up to demonstrate. So here, I'm, I'm scrolling up until I see a non-title fight. All of these are title fights. This is a non-title fight. Emmanuel Augustus, right? When you meet a non-title fight, now what you got to figure out is, is this a tune-up fight? Is this a stay-busy fight? And um, is was it really? Was it really that? So Emmanuel Augustus, uh, is this person like just somebody for the, the boxer to just kind of get their rust off and their skills uh, just tune up for another fight. Now if it's not that, if it wasn't that, it was actually a good competitive fight as this fight indicates he went nine rounds with this guy so it was a good competitive fight. The person wasn't dispatched immediately which was whether it be a tune up fight or a stay busy fight. Um, then it means that this fight was worth the while. Now that besides that the fight going a, a longer distance and also that the fight you know, may also be something that uh, when you look at the, the, the boxer's record, maybe it indicates, okay, this person's not on par with the other guy. They're just a tune-up fight, like a sparring session or whatever to stop this guy quick. Besides the length of the fight and also the boxer's credentials, you actually have to look at who that boxer faced. And that will tell you if it's a tune-up fight or stay-busy fight. And I can tell you this, whereas this fight may have been a tune-up fight, Floyd fought this guy in 2000, I believe it is. Yeah, there it is. He fought, uh, he fought, uh, he fought, what's the guy's name? Emmanuel Augustus. He fought Emmanuel Augustus in 2000. But you see, this is Emmanuel Augustus' resume here. You can see that two fights before, he, Emmanuel Augustus fought John John Molina, who was a former world champion. And if you scroll a little bit further down, you will see that he also faced another fighter who became a world champion. And that would be Disoblaze Hurtado. That was three years before. And Disoblaze Hurtado would become a world champion. Okay? He also faced Wilfredo Negron, who was a former world champion, and he beat him. He also faced Ivan Robinson, who was a top contender. And he lost to him. And this was early in his career. Also be, he also was beaten by Pete Teller Ferrimo, who would later become beaten by Arturo Gatti. So I'm just saying that when you look at this guy, his resume, it shows us that he wasn't just a stay busy fight. Now, he could have been a tune-up fight for who, for a higher weight class that Floyd Mayweather was coming in. And I think Floyd Mayweather was actually coming off of inactivity for a little while when he faced Emmanuel Augustus. So what we're going to do is 
we're going to this this would be a premier tune-up fight right if this was a tune-up fight but we're going to dismiss it as a tune-up fight and we're going to dismiss it as a stay busy fight because emmanuel augustus not only gave floyd all he could handle in that fight but also floyd thought he was going to get there and just get rid of him and he couldn't get rid of him which showed me that he had skills therefore he was not a tune-up fight and definitely not a tune-up fight for the next fight that was coming on for floyd so therefore emmanuel augustus was a legitimate fight i'll show you what a tune-up fight looks like very soon or a stay busy fight. Well, he definitely wasn't stay busy. And he definitely wasn't a tune-up. <laughs> all right, so so that's not one. Let's keep it going. We got Jesus. All these guys are title fights here. All of these are title fights. All of these are title fights. All of these are title fights. So in Floyd's entire career, he had one tune-up, one stay busy fight. One glorified sparring session and that was with conor mcgregor because he was a debutante there's no way somebody with extreme experience could face a debutante that's a tune-up fight it went 10 rounds so you would say that conor mcgregor was no tune-up but no he had no background in boxing he was an mma fighter and floyd carried him all right his fight with uh emmanuel augustus floyd would tell you was one of his toughest fights in his career because he was trying to stop that dude and the dude just kept coming and bringing it right this was different with conor mcgregor he carried him and then stopped him. So, this is different. This is definitely a tune-up fight. Because this dude is a debutante. <laughs> Alright? There's no way this ain't a tune-up. Uh, uh, stay busy fight. Not even a tune-up fight. It's a stay busy fight. Okay? So, out of Floyd's entire career as world champion, he had one stay busy fight. That is ridiculous. Okay? Let's look at Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya became world champion back in 19... Uh, in 1994 against Jimmy Bredo, okay? He became the WBO Super Featherweight Champion. Uh, so he had all these championship fights. He, he, he had one fight at Super Featherweight, then he went up to Lightweight and he faced Jorge Paez, beat him, and all of these guys are contenders and stuff. He unified with the IBF title with Rafael Ruelas. And then he had a fight against Daryl Tyson. Daryl Tyson. Okay, he KO'd him in the second round. But we got to look at Daryl Tyson and his and, and and what what he faced before he faced uh, Oscar De La Hoya. This was in 1996. Let's see what happened with Daryl Tyson. So Daryl Tyson, 1996, Oscar De La Hoya. So he was knocked out by Oscar De La Hoya. But who did he face before that? He faced a number of stay busy guys and he knocked them out. He had lost to Fred Ladd and Freddie Pendleton. Freddie Pendleton was a long reigning. Um, champion, boxing champion. So that's a serious name. He was stopped by Pen Freddie Pendleton, however, and he also had faced uh, another fighter in Roger Mayweather. He had actually got a split decision win over Roger Mayweather. He had also drawn with Livingston Bramble. All of these guys being world champions. He also faced Angel Miguel Angel Gonzalez, who never became a world champion. Oh, actually, he did. He did become a world champion, as you can see there. He was a world champion. He had beaten. He got beaten by him. So this guy had a lot of experience. And on top of that, even though he came off some losses, uh, he got KO'd by Freddie Pendleton when he faced Oscar De La Hoya. He, you couldn't call him a stay busy fight. There's no way you call him a stay busy fight. So this is not a stay busy fight. Let's keep it moving. Um, then he faced all these other guys here. So... Basically, what I'm saying is, when Oscar De La Hoya became world champion, <laughs> once he became world champion, he had no, zero, stay busy fights. That's right. Oscar De La Hoya had zero. Floyd Mayweather has one stay busy fight, which was with Conor McGregor. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya has none. So Floyd has a little blemish on his record. He has one. Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard became world champion, beating Wilfredo Benitez. After that, you can see all of these are championship matches that he had to defend and so on. Moved up to Super Welterweight, faced Ayub Kalure, Thomas Hearns, Bruce Finch was a championship match, and then he faced a guy named Kevin Howard here. This obviously was not necessarily a welterweight fight. Now this fight went nine rounds. Let's look at Kevin Howard's background to see if this is a stay busy fight. Kevin Howard. So this fight occurred in the year 19... 
84. All right, there's Ray Leonard here. Kevin Howard had faced Marlon Starling, who would later become a welterweight world champion. That was in 1983. He lost to him. Other than he not really, he didn't face any of the known names. He had faced Marlon Starling, okay, mm, and he had lost to him, and he lost to a guy called Mark Metal before he faced Ray Leonard and got knocked out in the ninth round. He still had some skills, though. He still had some skills. Yeah, and he actually faced Simon Brown later on in his career too and got knocked out. So he was he, he had been a top contender. No, he had not. Had he ever fought for a championship? Besides Ray Leonard? Ah, uh, he never fought for a championship. Tough. Okay. So but he you can't consider Kevin Howard a stay busy fight. You can't. You can't. I'm gonna show you all what a stay busy fight is, so that's not a stay busy fight. It ain't fought Marvin Hagler. Donnie Lalonde, Thomas Hearns, Roberto Durant, Terry Norris, and Hector Camacho. This dude had no stay busy fights in his career. So Ray Leonard, Oscar De La Hoya had no stay busy fights. Once they became world champion, they had no stay busy fights in their career. And Floyd Mayweather Jr. also would have had no stay busy fights in his career were it not for <laughs> were it not for Conor McGregor. He's got one. Okay. Now let's look at these guys. This is a different era. This is before Oscar's era. Before uh, this is actually in between. This Julio Cesar Chavez is actually between Ray Leonard and Oscar's career, but because uh, Oscar actually faced Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. And we're gonna look at the career of Sugar Ray Robinson. Both of them. Now watch how many stay busy fights these guys had. Okay. All right. So uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. He became world champion uh, by beating. Was a vacant title, Mario Martinez. He beat him to become the WBC World Super Featherweight Champion. And right after that, he faced Manuel Hernandez. <laughs> it is straight up a, straight, a stay busy fight. I'm going to prove that to you. 1985 is what we're looking at when Chavez fought him. Julio says to Chavez right here. Julio says to Chavez. So he faced a guy with 44 fights undefeated. He had just lost to J.T. Walker, who is God knows who he is. Fought absolutely nobody before that except for debutants and, and and you people stepped up huge to face Julio Cesar Chavez. That's what you call. This is an example of a stay busy fight. Manuel Herrera. He later on did face better opposition, but his first experience at the thing was against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. All right. Okay. Then he faced a legitimate opponent. So this is what he called a stay busy fight. Okay. Uh, then he faced Roger Mayweather, right? Prichard, and then he faced Jeff Bumpus. Jeff Bumpus, okay? 1985, December. Let's look at Jeff Bumpus in 1985. What kind of experience did Jeff Bumpus have in 1985? Well, this is incredible. Jeff Bumpus was not really a stay busy fight, even though he lost. He had faced Greg Hogan and Vinny Panzienza before he faced Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. So he had a lot of experience. You cannot call Jeff Bumpus a stay busy fight, even though he was very much outclassed in terms of experience. However, Roberto Collins was definitely a stay busy fight, and we'll prove that. So let's look at Roberto Collins here. Do I need to translate? Do I really? Oh man, I don't need to translate, man. And Roberto Collins, uh, this is 1985, I'm assuming. Julio Cesar Chavez, 1986. He had lost <laughs> to everybody. These are not even people with names. Okay. Wow. So, I mean, this dude... This dude lost to everybody. <laughs> so, um, this was a stay busy fight. Alright. That's two. Then you got Faustino Mario Barrios. Um, This was a... This is, this is championship fights. He's a super featherweight, so he's just fighting championship fights now. All these are championship fights. Here's one, Nicky Perez. Now this is this is a guy with a lot of experience when he faces um when he faces um when he faces uh who you say is Chavez Jr. However, the record doesn't mean much. You have to look at who this guy fought, all right, and who he beat to to make us know if you know this was credible or not. So Nicky Perez, this is the year is 
1988 when he faced Julio Cesar Chavez. Got a lot of fights under his belt. But as you can see, he fought absolutely nobody. No one. Oh, actually, he fought Salvador Sanchez back in 1981. He did. He fought somebody. Salvador Sanchez. That's kind of cool. But is this the Salvador Sanchez, though, that we know about? That's the question. Yep. So he did fight somebody. He fought Salvador Sanchez. That's about it. So he had a lot of experience. So I will not call him a stay busy fight. Okay, this is not a stay busy fight. We have three stay busy fights so far. But Rafael Limon. Rafael Limon, I think, had a lot of experience as well. And Vernon Buchanan. We're going to look at both of them, right? And see if they are stay busy fights. Rafael Limon. A lot of fights this guy had. And this would be in 1986, 1987. Okay. Faces Julio Cesar Chavez in 1988. He's been knocked out a number of times. He faced Hector Camacho and Bobby Chacon. Uh, of course, you have to look also at the losses. If this guy had been losing to everybody, that would be a stay-busy fight as well. But nonetheless, I think he has a lot of experience here. He's faced Cornelius Bozo Arras. He's been beaten by all the, the no-names. Bobby Chacon, Alexis Aguez. he got a lot of experience. But he'd been beaten by all these guys. So it was expected that Julio Cesar Chavez would beat this dude. You understand? There's a difference. When you're beating at least somebody or something. But I wouldn't... Would I call that a stay busy fight? I don't think I'd call it a stay busy fight. So I'm going to actually leave Rafael Lehman out of that. But Vernon Buchanan, I'm pretty sure is a stay busy fight. Okay? Vernon Buchanan, 25-1 and one, uh, in 1988. You got to ask yourself, what did this guy... Who did this guy face? And the answer to that is absolutely nobody. Okay, you look at it here. He ain't fought nobody. Okay. He just had a, a blown up uh, resume. So when he actually, actually fought Primo Ramos. Primo Ramos knocked him out. Oh, Primo Ramos at that. <laughs> so this guy, he had experience, got knocked out by Primo Ramos. But that's about it. So um, he is a stay busy fight. Alright, that was a tune-up fight for... Uh, for uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, and then he went back down to face Jose Ramos. So that's the fourth one. <clears throat> that's four state busy fights within the space of seven years. It's not bad. It's just not great. Then he starts to really have state busy fights with Kenny Vice in 1989. Rudolfo Bata in 1989. Ramon Aramburu. And you can see the fights are pretty close to one another. So it's a state busy fight to keep you loose. All right, so Kenny Vice... 1989. Face Julio Cesar Chavez here. It opened up the door for him to face Livingston Brownbull, but before that he had faced absolutely no one. Uh, Rudolph Obata. In 1989, he faced his last fight was Julio Cesar Chavez. That should tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> everything you need to know. And faced absolutely nobody. All right. So he's old as well. <clears throat> so that, those are, that's a say busy fight. And Ramon Arambu, well, you can see his record says it for itself. So, basically, that's three more added to the four that we already have. That's seven stay busy fights. Okay. And then we had Sammy Fuentes, who was a world champion. We're not going to include those. Though. He's not a stay busy fight. Hey, Mildred Taylor, and then he, he faced Aki Aqui Ado. This is a stay busy fight. Russell Mosley, that's another stay busy fight. And Jaime Balboa. I don't know for Jaime Balboa. He looks like he has a lot of fights, a lot of experience. Could have been because he's in Mexico. Let me see what the year what year was that. Uh, 1990. So you know, who this is? I was just trying to stay active. That's what that's the key with these stay busy fights. And when you look in 1990, there he faced him here. He lost to Daryl Tyson. He faced Mildred Taylor, Primo Ramos. He lost to them, but he at least had two two good fights. He, he lost to the guys, so that's kind of important to remember. But um, he had some he had some good good fights. He lost to them before he faced uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. So I wouldn't call him a stay busy fight. Again, you have to look at you know the experience of the fighter and stuff. Yeah, it should be a stay busy fight, but I wouldn't call that. I, I think it's a step up. You know. However, this dude here is a stay busy fight. Even though it's a sanctioned fight, it's not. So, uh, we're going. So, this is 8, 9, and, and this guy here is a stay busy fight. 
I can tell you that for a fact. Because he hasn't faced anybody. Alright? I can tell you that for a fact. In fact, his last fight was Julio Cesar Chavez. He faced no one. He faced Rudolfo Bada, but that, that was the state as he fights himself. So, this guy hadn't faced anybody when he faced uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. Okay, then you got John Duplicis. That was cool. So, even though it's a sanctioned fight, it's a state busy fight. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Tommy Small clearly was a state busy fight, but let's just, let's just show you 1991. He had faced Sean Miller, Robert Smith, uh, nobody, nobody, nobody. He got no experience to face anybody. So, yeah, obviously he gets blown away. All right. So this is number 11. Okay. Uh, this guy's good. Then you got Jorge Alberto Millian from Mexico City. Ignatius Perdamo. This is a stay busy fight, period. And then Juan Subranus. We're going to look at Subranus. And Piermo there for his 12. All right. Millian. He faces Julio Cesar Chavez where in his career? Here in 1991. Okay. And he had faced Miguel, not Miguel Angel Gonzalez. No. Oh, this is definitely a stay busy fight. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So Jorge Abel Million, even though he had a lot of fights, it was a stay busy fight. And Juan Sobranes. 1991. Juan Sobranos. Okay, he, he had just faced Miguel Angel Gonzalez. He had gotten knocked out by him. Um, boy, he got beaten by some folk. Oh, he got beaten by everybody. He was like a beating rag. Now, I would pretty much call him a stay busy fight because he got beaten by everybody. He's like around the mill and got beaten by everybody. But I'm gonna let it be. I'm gonna let him be. I'll, I'll give him a pass. So. Uh, Sobranus gets a pass, but these two no. So we are at 13. Stay busy fights. Okay, and then he fought some good fights, and then again, it goes back to the stay busy fights. Clearly, this is a stay busy fight. I can tell you right now, Marty Jakubowski, he was a stay busy fight. So that's 15. And he faced Greg Hogan. And then he had another stay busy fight with Silvio Walter Rojas. That's 16. And he faced Terrence Alley, Pernod Whitaker. Then he faced Mike Powell, which is 17. Then he had Andy Hooligan, Frankie Randall, Mildred Taylor, Tommy Lo T Tiger Lopez. You know, all of these fights are good. Then Greg Hook. A lot of experience. A lot of experience. But this is also a stay busy fight. It's being 1995. Alright. And you can see there's nobody... Nobody have known. Oh, he actually faced Mildred Taylor. He was knocked out in the third round. That's good. That's, a, he, that's about it. That's all the names there. So, uh, yeah, this is a stay busy fight. Greg Hook is definitely a stay busy fight. And then we got a good fight here. And then we got a stay busy fight in Scott Walker. Or is it a tune up fight for, 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 for welterweight? Is it a tune up? Scott Walker. Um, no. Scott Walker, 1996. Before he faced Oscar De La Hoya, I guess he needed to look sensational. So it was like a showcase fight. Because this guy got no experience with any top level opponents. So it's probably a showcase fight to make him look good. So he sparked out, <laughs> he sparked the daylights out of Scott Walker, which is another one that's, uh, I don't know, that's 18. Stay busy fights. Then you got Oscar De La Hoya. He fought little Joey Kamash. It's okay, it's cool. And then he fought Tony Martin. I don't know. Tony Martin, I don't know who this guy is. So it must have been just a, a, a rebound fight. Like a stay busy fight, but a rebound fight. And Larry LaCossier. These are like two rebound fights. They have good records too. So they look good. That was in 1997. Let's see. Tony Martin, a black dude. His last fight was Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. And yeah, he fought nobody, which is expected. So yeah, this was stay busy. And then Larry, like, whatever. And uh, actually, guy Hector Camacho, that's cool. Uh, yeah, this guy fought nobody as well. So these are two stay but two more stay busy fights. So that's twenty stay busy fights there. For Miguel Angel Gonzalez to a draw, that's kind of cool. 
Then he fought this guy who fought no one before he faced Oscar De La Hoya. Again, a showcase fight. Ken Sigurani. This was in the year 1998. He's at the end of this guy. I think he ended the guy's career. <laughs> and this dude, again, didn't face nobody. But it set him up to face another guy. So he got another name on his resume because of who this is, Chavez. Um, so there you go. That's 21. You got Oscar De La Hoya. Then you got Verdell Smith. It's another stay busy fight. Marty Jakubowski faced him again. It's another stay busy fight. Then he faced Willie Wise, and Willie Wise beat him. Verdell Smith. Wow, this dude. This dude got a wacky profile. He actually got to fight Carlos Manuel Baldomir and Jose Luis Castillo. This guy stuck around pretty long. Lost to Angel and Freddy. This dude lost to everybody. Even Marty Jakubowski. <laughs> Jesse James Lair, Leon Spinks. Anyway, who this is Chavez was in 1999. Before that, he wasn't getting any big fights. So, yeah, he was a stay busy fight. As I told you. So, there you go. So, um, Ferdo Smith. That would be 22. Marty Jakubowski, by then he had fought some names. Willie Wise beat him. Buck Smith was the other guy. I don't even know who this dude is. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know who this guy is. Buck Smith, 1999. He must have fought somebody. Come on now. Come on now, Buck. He had so many fights. Let's see, Buck Smith. Yeah, he fought. Antonio Margarito got knocked out. What's the fighting scare? <laughs> a whole bunch of nobodies okay so Buck Smith <laughs> Buck Smith is a stay busy fight yeah he fought Antonio Margarita but he got stopped in the second round he was a stay busy fight alright there you go experience he got from a, <laughs> from a, from a, 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 a I forgot what his name is alright so forget him All right? so that's 23 then he fought Costa Zoo who beat him and he had rebound fights which would be Terry Thomas he faced Willie Wise, and he actually knocked out Willie Wise. He got his vengeance on Willie Wise. Willie Wise was supposed to be a stay-busy fight. That turned out bad. <laughs> so anyway, Terry Thomas. Terry Thomas. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. besides him. Ah, he actually faced the Beretta Duran. Got stretched out, but, I mean, it is what it is. Why are you drawing with Reggie Strickland? Reggie Strickland. <laughs> oh, my God. So, again, this guy is a stay busy fight, right? He's just in there to get knocked out. And he gets knocked out by people. I mean, Duran had him as a stay busy fight, okay? All right, so anyway. Uh, yeah, so. Terry Thomas, stay busy fight. That's 24. And all these other guys are good. All of these other guys are good. So, there you go. He had 24 stay busy fights. That's a lot of stay busy fights. You know. And so of his 107 wins. Or I think he won. You got to take away 24 of those. Which leaves you with 83 wins. That's still a lot of wins. But those fights as world champion. We're not even taking away his preparation fights. Which were 40 something fights. Would you take away that suddenly that 83 fights or 84 fights turns out to be 40 something fights all right and we don't talk about rematches which he shouldn't have had to start with that's another one so and then some of the sanction fights which the guys were really, really not on this level so we haven't even talked about that but the point is when you start to boil down when you start to take off you start to chip away at all those fights now when you streamline it to the fights that count, you'll find out that that's what Oscar De La Hoya, Floyd Mayweather, and Sugar Ray Leonard did. They fought the fights that count. So that even though Oscar De La Hoya only had in his entire career 45 fights, or Sugar Ray Leonard only had 40 fights in his career, it's so streamlined that, you know, when you see 40 fights in his career or, or, or 45 fights in Oscar De La Hoya's career, that's the fights that counted. You understand? 
his preparatory fights to become a world champion. And once he became a world champion, he never dropped his standard. Same thing with Floyd Mayweather. You see, 50 fights, that's a compressed thing. Once the, the fighter had prepared himself and became world champion, he never dropped the bar, except for his last fight, which he dropped the bar on that. That's a glorified boxing sparring match, all right? Let's just be real. So that's the thing with the modern age. The modern age now, once you get to a certain level, and that's why they talk about there's levels to this, you don't drop your standard and just to stay in shape. No, you, there's different ways now to stay in shape, to stay in boxing shape, sparring, and so many other things. And, and mentally, you, you, you have a sharp game. But the old school way was just to keep busy, just keep stay busy so you can stay in shape. And that's what happened with Julio Cesar Chavez and these guys. Again, what you really want to look at is the fights that really counted. So... For these guys that have got tremendous records, I mean, this guy got 115 bouts, right? Sounds impressive, but really and truly, a lot of those bouts are like just glorified sparring sessions, right? Where he sparks a guy out, the guy gets a paycheck. You still get a paycheck for sparring, so, you know. So it's basically that. It's about staying active all the time. You don't have to be in an actual fight all the time to stay active. And that's what the modern school of boxing does. So when we look at Sugar Ray Robinson again, I want to show you guys how many stay busy tune up fights he had. Now he had 201 fights. Okay, so he had a lot of fights. Right? I know we went through Sugar Ray Robinson before, so I'm not going to really comment too much. I'm not even going to look at the background of the guys. I'm just going to tell you what it is, but how, I'm going to just count them, okay, it's for the interest of time. Because this video is pretty long. So I'm just telling you it's a different era of fighting. It's not that the guys back in the day were bad or anything but when you guys say oh Floyd only did uh, 40 fights or this guy only did 30 fights or you know this guy only did 50 fights but these guys used to do 200 fights you can't say that because really the guys today do the fights that count they do the top level top tier fights whereas the guys back in the day they would do a top tier fight and then they would do a stay busy or a tune up fight in between and so a lot of those fights, why they have extraordinarily high numbers is because a lot of the sparring sessions that they should have been doing, instead they end up doing them as actual legitimate fights that are recorded as fights because they wanted to stay active as, as much as possible. All right? So, based on that, let's look at Sugar Ray Robinson's career and how regularly he fought as well. So he became world champion when he beat Tommy Bell. And we already know that here is one, two. These are definitely two stay busy fights here. Here's a third one. He had three stay busy fights, okay? And that's already more than most people. Then he comes here and he does again four, five, okay? He has five stay busy fights. Then California Jackie Wilson is a worthy contender. Definitely. Billy Nixon is six. He has an official fight here. Then he faces Ozzy Harris, which is seven. Henry Brim is a legitimate um, fight. Oh, sorry. Ozzy Harris and Harry Brim are legitimate fights. So this is still six. And so is Bernard Ducard. Kid Gavilan, obviously. Bobby Lee is, um, again, another very good uh, fight. You can just look at it. It goes the distance, then it means something. Young Gene Buffalo. A lot of experience. Let's look into him. So we still have six fights that are stay busy fights. Gene Buffalo had a lot of experience. Sugar Ray Robinson fought him in 1949. Let's see what's going on with him. Very experienced fighter. So here Sugar Ray Robinson faced him. As you can see, he faced a lot of different opponents. What you got to look for here, since we may not know all and be familiar with all these different opponents, is you have to look at, uh, he faced Charlie Burley. Charlie Burley stopped him. So this guy got some some kind of experience. He faced Holman Williams. These are names. These are the guys from the, the um, murderers row. So he faced some names. He definitely he faced Charlie Burley twice. He faced Holman Williams three times. Wow. So no no I can't call this guy a stay busy fight. All right. Any guy with a lot of experience, generally speaking, unless he's you know not really fighting a certain tier of fighting, these guys you know he stopped this guy in the first round, but. Still, this guy is not a stay busy fight. All right, so we still had six. Henry Brim, he, he rematched Bobby Lee for what reason I don't know. 
See, sometimes we have unnecessary rematches. I don't know why these guys would rematch. He also faced Don Lee, Earl Turner, Freddie Flores, F Freddie Flores. Um, you saw the fight with Fl Freddie Flores. How he manhandled him. I think. I think. I think it's either later. It's probably a later one. And he did rematch Freddie Flores. I don't even know why. But um, Freddie Flores in 1949. Who was this guy? Let's see. So he faced Sugar Ray Robinson and Henry Brim. Henry Brim's a good fighter. Uh, who else did he face in his career? He had a lot of fights, right? He faced, I guess, Jake LaMotta's brother, Joey LaMotta, and he beat him. Not that it means anything. He, fe he beat Artie Levine, who was once a, a former world champion. Oh, he also faced Sugar Ray Robinson before and got knocked out. Oh, so Sh this is a stay busy fight because Sugar Ray Robinson has beaten this guy already. This is an unnecessary fight. Shouldn't have faced him. Freddie Flores is a stay busy fight. That's that's, that's seven. Cecil Houston, a lot of experience. Don't know if he was really on Sugar Ray Robinson's level. So it could have been a stay busy fight. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, Sugar Ray Robinson against Cecil Hudson. This was in 1949 as well. This dude fought all the way to 1962. That's crazy. Anyway, he had been on a tremendous losing streak. He had actually beaten Jake LaMotta and Tommy Bell. So you can't really count him out. You can't call him a step over. So this is not a stay busy fight. Okay, so we're still at seven. Um, Steve Bellwa was not somebody you can just run over like that. So, no. Benny Evans. Benny Evans and Charlie Dutson. I don't know too much about these guys. All right, he'd already faced Don Lee. And he had a tough fight with him. And he faced him again. He had another tough fight with him. That's cool. Benny Evans. Let's talk about that. Benny Evans, 1949. This dude had a lot of fights in 1949, so I'm guessing it's a stay busy fight. Benny Evans. Yep. Losing streak and stuff. Did fight Tommy Burns, though. And he did beat Tommy Burns once. I don't know why I'm saying that. I don't even know who Tommy Burns is. So basically, this is a stay busy fight. This is what it was. Charlie Dudson. So that's eight or seven. I can't remember. Eight. Yeah, this dude. Yep. Another stay busy fight. So Charlie Dudson and uh, Benny Evans were stay busy fights. That's nine. He had already faced Don Lee. Vern Lester. Vern Lester. I, I can't really say. You just have to look to see if you see any names in there. But I'm guessing it's a stay busy fight, which would be ten. Yeah. This is at the end of his career, too. You know, this dude had face some good names. Jose Basora, Jack LaMotta, but he's been beaten by all of them. Maybe in his prime. Maybe he's an old guy. This is at the end of his career. Yeah, because he had a long career. You can see. He had a long career. Well, at least he got to face the best of the best at a certain point. Hey, it was a stay busy fight. So that's 10, like we said. Uh, George LaRova, this guy was experienced. Uh, I think he faced some good peoples. I'm going to check it out just to check and see. And Al Mobley. But you can see he was fighting very regularly. Like really regularly here. So these are all supposedly stay busy fights. That's why they call stay busy fights. Because he's staying busy. <laughs> Aaron Wade. This is a good, this is a good, good, good opponent here. Jean Walczak. I, I, knew, I know that. Okay. So George LaRova. He may have good fights under his belt. But... Um, it doesn't mean that he, this is not a stay busy fight, right? Oh, this is at the end of his career, so yeah, it was a stay busy fight. Um, Al Mobley. Al Mobley. Okay, Ike Williams. He just faced Ike Williams. Ike Williams had outpointed him. This is what I'm going to tell you. This is what I'm going to tell you. Because he was just on a losing streak. He lose to everybody. I got to call it a stay busy fight, which would be 13. Oh, what, 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 where are we at? 11, 12. Yeah, 13, 14. 14. That's 14. Johnny Dudley was probably a stay busy. Yeah, he was. At the end of his career, right? 
So he was a stay busy fight. And Aaron Wade looked like a good fighter. Little Tiger Wade, he was called. But it was his last. <laughs> it was the last fight of his career. So he was an old dude. So <laughs> that was a stay busy fight as well. Okay, pity. So at the end of the day, these are old guys, right? Uh, these were all stay busy fights, which means we're looking at what where where are we at? I can't even remember. I think it's 13, 14, 15, okay? George Kustner, I think he faced him before he, he dropped him. That was a good win. Cliff Beckett. Cliff Beckett. Was Cliff Beckett, a, I know he was a name, or at least people think so. But was, was Cliff Beckett uh, a stay busy fight? I don't know. It was his last fight, so yes. <laughs> He had been knocked out by everybody. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it was, it was. So that's uh, what is that? That sixteen. Ray Barnes had a good account of himself. Robert Villamain was a good fighter. Charlie Fasuri was a good fighter. That was a world type event right there. We have Billy Brown. Billy Brown is an experienced fighter. I don't know how good he was. Joe Rindon. Let's see. That was in 1950. This is just before facing Bobo Olsen. Um, that was his last fight, so go figure. <laughs> um, that was a stay busy fight, so that's what, 17? You got Bobo Olsen, you got Bobby Dykes. These guys are not stay busy fights, I can tell you that. Um, Jean Stock, this was in Paris. The fight was stopped pretty early. Luke Van Damme, John Walzak, Robert Villamain. Hand stretch, that's a good fighter. Hand stretch, no, hang, hold on. Hand stretch, no. I don't know what, what's the deal with hand stretch. Hold on, where, where are we? Hey man, what happened there? All right, hand stretch right here. Okay, so I don't know too much about hand stretch. This is all in 1950, by the way. So this is this, that's the way we call them stay busy fights. He was a German guy. I think it was prematurely stopped or something. Is that right? He beat Randy Turpin though. He was a good fighter. You see, 1950, Sugar Ray Robinson stopped him in the fifth. Peter Muller had knocked him out the fight before, but he's a good fighter. I wouldn't call this a stay busy. Um, Jake LaMotta was a good fight. Holly Mills. Don Ellis. We'd, we'd seen him face Don Ellis a number of times. Kid Marcel. Uh, John Waynes. I don't know too much about John Waynes. Jean Waynes or whatever his name is. Jean De Bruyne. That was a good fight. Jean Walzak again. He had a lot of rematches with people he beat already. Uh, Gerald Height. Cyril De Nuit. Uh, Randy Turpin beat him. Bobo Olsen. Rocky Graciana. Joey Maxson. Joe Rindon again. It's a stay busy fight. So that's seven, 17. Tella Ola. It's probably 18. Uh, 18. He, he, he's an old guy by now. And Bob Young. It's probably 19 right here. So let's see. Cyril De La Noite. This is at the end of his career. And yeah, he fought basically nobody. So, yeah. Tell, tell Ola. Yeah. And Young, Bob Young. Yeah. So that's 19 uh, Stay Busy Fights. He's fighting pretty regularly, though. It's pretty cool. Tony Baldoni. Not a good record, but he didn't look like he was much of anything. Let's see, 1960. Oh, that was his last. <laughs> that was his last fight. So I'm right. 20. Uh, Paul Pender, Gene Fulmer, Gene Fulmer, Will Greaves. All good fighters. Danny Moyer, Al Hauser. Al Hauser is definitely a stay busy fight. That's 21. You just look at his record. Probably the last fight was Sugar Ray Robinson. Close to, close to. <laughs> That's a stay busy fight. All right. And then you had uh, 
Let's see who else we got. Bobby Lee. He faced Bobby Lee before. He'll give him a good fight. Uh, Fillmore, Terry Downs. Diego Infantes. I don't know who that guy is. Oh, yeah, definitely. Stay busy fight. <laughs> this guy fought nobody. Vienna, Italy. Oh, come on now. So that's 23. Estaf, Estatov from Spain. That's 24. All these European dudes. <laughs> And then he played Bernie Reynolds, who's 25, Bill, Billy Thornton, 26, Murray Starbuck, 27. Can't be a debutante. What, come on, man. You can't be fighting debutantes, man. Come on. All right. He beat. These are all stay busy fights. All of these. But we, we let it be because, you know, he was an old guy and stuff. But yeah, these are all stay busy fights. And they literally are stay busy fights. You see him fighting multiple times a month. So all of these are stay busy fights. It doesn't matter if he goes to points or whatever. These are supposed to be stay busy to keep him busy. Clearly, these are all stay busy fights. So uh, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. <laughs> uh, let's see here. He's traveling the world though. He's kind of doing what Floyd do. When you get old, you gotta fight to your level. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, Johnny Angels, 22, 23, um, what I say? I don't even know, 25, what did I say? 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, uh, 31, 32. This guy had a lot of experience, so I'll let him go. 33, he actually lost to that guy. That should have been a stay busy fight, dude. Uh, 33... 34, 35, <laughs> uh, 36, 37. He had 37 stay busy fights. Probably more than that. Who cares? He had rematches and stuff. So out of 201 fights, you got 163 of them that actually, uh, you know, you, you minus your also becoming a world champion, which is like 40 something fights, just like Julio Cesar Chavez. You minus that, which you end up with like 122 of them. That's still a sizable number, 120-something of them being, you know, not stay busy fights. And then you have to look at the fact that he had some rematches which were just totally unnecessary. So you take away all of that, it's, the numbers start to shrink down. And that's humongous number of 201 suddenly becomes numbers like this, 50 and 39 and... 36 and stuff like that it, it becomes that because like I said these guys actually fought the fights that really mattered They once they became world champion they weren't fighting stay busy fights right whereas these guys they kept busy so they would fight a lot of fights in a year but not necessarily top tier competition just fights to keep them busy to keep them in shape so that's the difference and that's the difference between the two eras I always want you guys to understand that that's why when you hear guys like Buddy McGurk say it's a different era different time and you hear guys like Roger May would say what really counts is who you fought and who you beat that's the important thing but the nice thing about guys like Mayweather and De La Hoya and Ray Leonard is you can see it right in front of your face the fights that really counted you can see it in front of your face you know whereas with guys like Sugar Ray Robinson and Julio Cesar Chavez Jr you have to actually sift through, you know, all those fights to see the fights that actually counted and that actually mattered. You know, if I go and I beat a guy easy and then I go back and I beat him easy again, what was the use of that? You know, that was not, that's like a fight that was unnecessary. And you, and these guys like Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and Sugar Ray Robinson, they would do it multiple times. They'd come back and fight the same guy and beat the brakes off of him. you come back and beat the brakes off of him again and beat the brakes off of him again. So that's two, three, four times. And that's extra padding here for these fights. So, like, when you boil everything down, yeah, they still fought a lot of fights that counted. You know, sometimes 50-something, 50 50-something 50 fights that counted. Didn't win all of them, but, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, when you look at it, and if you look at the level of the amount of opponents that really counted, when you do it like that, the amount of opponents that really counted, it comes up to, like, 20, 14, etc. Floyd actually beat the same number of opponents uh, that really counted in his career as Sugar Ray Robinson did but he did it in much less fights Oscar De La Hoya did uh, you know beat some really 
again, and Ray Leonard also beat a number of opponents. Like I think it was Oscar did like 15, 16 or something like that. Ray Leonard did like, uh, I can't remember. It's a lot of opponents. And for all those fights that these, these throwback fighters had, it's it's strange how they only fought a certain amount of opponents. Like Julio Cesar Chavez, you would be shocked. He only fought like 14, 15 really notable legendary opponents. You know, or not le necessarily legendary, but just notable opponents. Sugar Ray Robinson, I think, fought 26 or 27, but beat 20, I think it was 21 or 22, where it was the same thing like Floyd. And Oscar De La Hoya, this, uh, you know, you know, this this is the crazy thing. That's why Floyd said, you know, Sugar Ray Robinson took like 201 fights to do what I did in 50 fights. And he's right. Because with the new era of boxing, you, you once you reach a certain level, you don't fight below your level. You fight to your level. Um, whereas back in the day, you know, you would still take fights that, you know, today, if Floyd was to face a guy like what Sugar Ray Robinson faced, a dude that's a, you know, you know, well, he did. He fought Conor McGregor and he got a lot of flack for it, right? So, and Conor McGregor was a glorified debutante. Whereas Sugar Ray Robinson was fighting, and remember, Floyd is like 40-something years old, right? When he fought Conor McGregor, I think it was 41, I think, or 40. When Sugar Ray Robinson was 40, he was fighting debutants and all kinds of things. Nobody gave him flack for that. It's called a stay busy fight. And it's strange. Today, if a fighter tries to do that, they call, they're called cherry pickers. So you see how things are so much different to back in the day where guys could cherry pick fights because they were going to have big fights after. Whereas today, you couldn't do that. You'd be accused of being a cherry picker. It's crazy. That's the way how times have changed in boxing. And the standard's so high now, people expect to be entertained with fights that are better than the throwback fights. Like Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury is going to be a better fight than throwback fights. You guys are not going to know that because people have been hyping up the throwback fights as if they're the greatest thing of all time. Some of them are. They really are exciting, but a lot of them, and it's because fighters throw caution to the wind and just do anything, and it's not strategic, but it's still, at the same time, you got to understand, there's some really exciting fights we've seen in our time, and I wish you guys would just respect that. That's all I'm saying. A lot of times people think I'm trying to disrespect the past greats. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm calling out you guys out there who have been disrespecting the present greats. You've been disrespecting the present greats. And trying to show that the past greats did something greater than they did. And it's not the case. And I had to sometimes point that out. I have to break the fiction. Break what you call the nostalgia that you guys have about the past greats. So you can see that actually when you break it down. The past greats fought, yes, some reputable fighters in their time. Don't get me wrong. They fought just about every reputable fighter they were supposed to. But a lot of the fights you're talking about, like 201 fights... Floyd could do that in sparring. Oscar could do that in sparring. Ray Leonard could do that in sparring. No, they decided instead to go for the elite fighters and only face the elite fighters. That's the difference. And I think when you guys can understand that, then you can understand why I continuously say over and over again that this era is actually better than past eras. But you guys have to process what I'm saying. Yes, there are some things that have been lost in the sport of boxing certain defensive maneuvers, certain offensive maneuvers. The sport has changed. The rounds have gotten shorter. Now you have 12 round fights. You have less rounds, sorry. Not shorter rounds, but less rounds. 12 round fights instead of 15 round fights, which means the pace of the boxing has changed. Even the longer game is faster. If you have shorter amounts of rounds, it means you can move faster. You can gauge yourself. You can actually fight faster. So the amateurs, guys go at faster speeds in their three round fights than guys who are going 12 round fights like guys are going 15 round fights like the real throwback fighters who had unlimited amount of fights there was a lot of clinching the action was not always as active if you were to see a real throwback fight from the 1920s 1930s etc dudes not been doing much they be clinching a lot you know I keep on telling people boxing has evolved so much now that it's much more athletic than it used to be. And guys would quarrel with me, as a Charles, look at how he moved and stuff. I was like, no, he don't compare to a Sean Porter. We bring a Sean Porter in the room against Ezra Charles, he, he'd be out active, he'd be out punching him, he'd be more active than Ezra Charles could ever be. I, I'm just saying, you guys just look and you guys I don't know why people are so caught up in nostalgia, man. To see, just open your eyes. 
turn off the blinders and just stop being so nostalgic for the past. I keep on telling people the boxes have gotten stronger, they got bigger, they got faster, they got sharper, the game's more technical, the game's more uh, of a chess match today than it used to be, a faster chess match game because the, the boxing, boxing pace has gotten faster. And people just don't get it. People still idolize Willie Pep. People idolize Willie Pep. Yeah, Willie Pep was a phenomenon for his time. I watched footage of him, and he had nice little foot movement and stuff, But and he used to bounce around the ring and stuff, but dude, stick and move has gotten so much more advanced than that now. There's so many other angles to the game. Yeah, the fundamentals of the game is still there, but it's so much more to boxing. You know, the high guard, the peekaboo stance, you know, the, the half guard, the wide stance. I mean, there's so much more going on in boxing that has happened and like people still stuck up in their nostalgia. It's really annoying to me when I hear somebody who said they seen Sugar Ray Robinson moving around the ring and how he was a joy to behold. Yet he never used the high guard stance. He never once used the high guard stance. He's limited. And we see it with Shane Mosley. You counter you could hit Sugar Ray Robinson with an overhand right any day, all day, every day. He get caught with an overhand right any day, all day, every day. And you guys can't see that. You can't see how squared up he was and how he used to take body shots all the time. Just because he was a big welterweight doesn't mean he don't get touched. And he got touched quite a lot. And then he had them crazy looping shots. And I mean, he had good timing and everything. But I mean, come on now. A small pivot. And this guy would, would, would be, you know, thrown off. He'd be thrown off with all his looping uh, body shots. Yeah, he was quick. Yeah, he was speedy. Yes, he had some nice footwork at times. Yeah, he could do a couple of things. But come on, man. You guys got to grow up. I mean, it's like Will Chamberlain was an amazing basketball player. But today, as much as Will Chamberlain scored all those points, today, the, the basketball players today are much more advanced than Will Chamberlain is. You got to acknowledge these things. Yes, these guys were the guys that um, set the foundation for sport and elevated it. But they're not like Will Chamberlain. If he were to play sports today, he gets so. I mean, you have to be strong like these basketball players. You gotta be able to shoot, shoot threes like this. I mean, come on, man. And that's what I'm trying to say. The sport evolves. Basketball has evolved since Michael Jordan. Everybody's talking about Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. I mean, he was a fantastic player and everything. But there are are players now that are bigger than him, stronger than him, taller than him, can do more things than he could do. And he was fantastic. I love to see him. Poetry in motion. But he's not the be-all and end-all, man. And the sport has changed as well. So we can't be so nostalgic that we only moaning and groaning for the past. We have to be able to shift with the times and change. That's all I'm saying. Now, pound for pound, we'll start with Sugar Ray Robinson and also another fighter. I can't remember who he is. A Harlem guy. And, and all I'm saying is, that's cool. He was the founder. He was the guy that inspired people to say pound for pound. But to say he is the pound for pound number one fighter in the world to this day, no, he's not. And anybody who says he is, they're lying. They're fooling themselves. But he set the foundation for younger boxers coming after him to do better and greater things. Thanks to Sugar Ray Robinson, we got Muhammad Ali. Thanks to Sugar Ray Robinson, we got Sugar Ray Leonard. Thanks to Sugar Ray Robinson, we had Sugar Shane Mosley. These guys fell, followed in the guy's footsteps and idolized him. And because of that, they took the game to another level. We had guys like Sugar Shane Mosley jumping up to welterweight and beating Oscar De La Hoya. But it wouldn't have happened if Sugar Ray Robinson didn't attempt to do that by jumping up from middleweight to light heavyweight to take on that big light heavyweight. You see what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, it's good that these guys were mentors for guys that came on and built the foundation for them. But to tell me that the guys presently today are inferior to the guys of yesteryear is to really be kind of rubbing yourself wrong. Yeah, some of these guys fought with broken shoulders and stuff like that and damaged tendons and ripped ligaments and stuff. And they fought with blood, guts, and, 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 and desire. I get that. But the, 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 don't try and diminish the boxers today. Some guys have died in the ring. Some people have come out of the ring in comas. Okay? Some guys today, they hit another guy and they kill him in the ring. Okay? And this, up to recently, a guy died in the ring. Okay? 
So with all the safety equipment and all the things we try to do for boxing, boxing is still a dangerous sport, and the guys are hitting harder than they ever hit in the history of this sport. It's gotten more and more dangerous. And in the rock'em, sock'em kind of thing, you can't just do that in boxing, man. It's going to destroy you. So as much as people like to throw back fights and stuff, you got to adjust to understand the modern day times. And the modern day times of boxing, what is at the table, look at the new breed of fighters. It's a very ex exciting age of boxing because the heavyweight division is pumping, the welterweight division is pumping, the middleweight division is pumping, the light heavyweight division is pumping. You haven't had so many divisions that have been so exciting in a long time, in a long, long time. The lightweight division is pumping, you know, that's that's incredible when you have so many divisions and it's so exciting to think about and how things are going to line up with them. I don't know why people being so stupid and, and just dumb and talking about how boxing is dying and blah, blah, blah. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. So that's what I got to say for now. And I, I got my fair share of talking about boxing. I haven't gone out and check out my mom. But I, I invested all my time in talking about boxing with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed these videos. Don't forget you can subscribe, share, and you can also donate to my channel. I take donations via Western Union and MoneyGram. And I've been doing these videos also to see if I can collect some monies from you guys as well. You know, because I got to make a living one way or the other. <laughs> so do understand that. I hope you guys respect these videos. I think a lot of people watch my videos. But you know what's the sad thing is that sometimes people are just ungrateful. They take your stuff, move with it, claim it as their own, and move on. You know what I'm saying? It's sad because I try to bring something special to the game. I try to bring some understanding of what's going on in the game. I myself don't box, but I try to be an educated person who's viewing boxing. That's what I try to do. And I try to add my little flavor to the game, let people know what's up with this game of boxing. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot to the boxing. Trust me. You... If you if you even tried to box once in your life, you realize how much work it, you have to put in. You have to be dedicated to this sport, and there's so many different ways to fall short and get shafted in the sport of boxing. This is one of the toughest sports in the world. It's called a sport, like Deontay Wilder said, it's not really a sport, but it is a sport at the same time, and um, it's one of the top level, top tier combat sports in the world. It's just what it is because it's specialized in hand combat hand-to-hand -hand combat you know and a lot of things go into it a lot of work goes into it a lot of years and training goes into it you probably never stop learning when you're in the sport of boxing so that's what I like about it that's the thing that gets me about boxing is it's counterintuitive thanks to guys like um, I forgot what his name is he was a trainer I think I'm subscribed to him Barry Robinson Barry Robinson's million styles boxing opened my mind to what the sport of boxing is and how counterintuitive it is. It reminded me of when I was doing martial arts. I was doing um, um, uh, Shitiro. And it's so counterintuitive. The stances and everything are counterintuitive. And boxing is counterintuitive. And a lot of you fans don't know what you're talking about. You really don't. You don't know what you're talking about when you're talking about boxing. And it's sad. Because you guys get caught up in power and strength and all the other unnecessary things that have nothing to do with combat. Like combat has to do with position, angle. If I'm in position, you're not in position, you can't hurt me. I'm in position to take you out. You can't not touch me. And that's something you guys need to understand. It's about the angles in the ring. Not only with your hands, but also with your feet, your foot positioning. Footwork is like everything in boxing. You know, you heard Andrew Ward talk about footwork. It's how you conduct your footwork. Some people bounce around the ring. Some people shuffle around the ring. Some people pivot around the ring. Some people uh, step around the ring. There's, there's different ways to move. Some people glide, slide through. There are different ways to move in the ring. And that's what makes boxing so much fun to me. And it's like a chess. It's like there's so many different moves you can make. So many different things you can do in that ring. And how you move. You know, you can move you know, straight up. You can move uh, in a crouch position. You can move by dipping, swinging, rolling, splitting bobbing weaving snapping back uh you know uh, dipping there's so many different ways to move your body and then there's so many ways to move your upper body versus your lower body and it that can get can involve fainting it can involve jabbing it can involve punching it can be involved uh you know moving out the way uh, of, of shots 
I mean, blocking. I mean, it, it's just so much to the sport of boxing in terms of movement. It's like a dance, but it's like you have to know the, all the ingredients for the dance. And then you have to use the appropriate dance for the opponent you're facing. It's 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 such a, a elaborate art, man. And that's the thing that I don't understand. How all you people out there can't get and understand how much boxing is as a sport is... It's 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 got so much stuff going on in it, you know, and that's why I respect uh, Coach uh, uh, Eric Bradley. I really respect that man, and I refer you guys to his channel all the time because Master Boxing is an incredible channel. Now, let me just say, as much as Eric Bradley is teaching you certain things online on his channel, you have to repeat those things over and over and it's always good to have like a coach or somebody who's watching you to make sure you're doing it correctly because sometimes you start practicing things and you're doing them incorrectly and you're not aware of it even if you look in the mirror you think you're doing everything right but you're not doing everything right that's why you need a coach to actually give you the right positioning to, to how to, to to do certain things and so there's a lot that goes on in boxing it's not just you just go in there and try out something you could get yourself badly hurt so you know, the sport of boxing, that's why you have a coach. That's why you have a trainer. Somebody with an extra eye show you how it's done. Usually you want somebody who's actually been in the business very long or someone at least who has boxed before so they can show you exactly what it is, exactly what you're supposed to be looking for, exactly how you do it. Catching punches, you know, powering punches, blocking punches, um, countering punches, splitting punches, etc. You have to know exactly how that's done. Eric Bradley can show you step by step, but you may need personal training and a personal coach along with him, so that you you know you can do every step of the way right. Otherwise, you can get yourself badly hurt. This is not a sport where it's a game. You're not playing. This thing it can hurt you really bad. So you have to be very careful with. So that's all I got to say for now. I just wanted to share that with you guys. The difference between. Uh, the present time and past times, the different eras with respect to how fighters would have fought and what kind of level of competition they had fought after they become world champions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe, share, don't forget to donate to my channel because when you donate to my channel, it allows me to have enough revenue to live and also to be able to do internet and stuff so that I can keep on doing videos for you guys. I do need the financial support at this time since I'm not working anywhere, just trying to help and sustain my home and family. So it will be very kind if you can make those donations. It's via Western Union or MoneyGram. Please do not uh, give me what you don't have. So if you don't have the money to do so, don't worry about it. But otherwise, feel free to donate to my channel anytime. I'm going to collect it via MoneyGram or Western Union. Just let me know. I'll give you the details to where you need to send it. And I you can just send the money that will really help me out as well and I'll be able to keep my end of the deal by having the internet running and therefore be able to afford you more videos I can't tell you what the future holds for me and for my family it is somewhat uncertain at this point in time so I have to take one day at a time and see how things go I got the break today and yesterday to do these videos. I don't know how my mom's doing. I'm going to go out there and check her out and see how she's doing. I really should have been helping her out with certain things. And I just decided, man, I'm just going to spend this day talking boxing. Because it's kind of exciting with the Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder. This was a long video. If you guys made it to the end of it, thank you. Let me just close this off with something concerning Jesus. I want to sing a song. Yeah, I'm singing a song. <laughs> And this song goes like this. In the still of the night, I will still see your light. In the dark without sight, you make blind see the light. So I thank you forevermore Cause you're the day star That rises in our hearts And you're the morning sun 
which I like you in part, and we're just trees lifting leaves to your sun, and we're glad that you have come, Lord Jesus. I've seen small and I've seen large return to where they came from. I've seen people who are all with possessions lose all them. I've seen high places lowered and low places elevated. So I'm grateful that you did this for us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross our debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky Lord I lift your name on high oh, Lord we lift your name on high Lord we love to sing your praises oh Lord, we love to see you in our lives. Oh, Lord, we love to show your praises. Sing it for me. You came from heaven to earth to show oh, the way from the earth to the cross or oh, death. To pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, we lift your name on high. Lord, we lift your name on.